Let's go over the acid flow, yo. So, what do we see? We see an attacker controlled packet coming in and that is going to be used via this compress header pointer. Then we see the compress header offsetter length and compressed header original compressed seg size being used for acid math. And that's as bad as an acid bath, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, it's not just acid math, it's acid math being used for potential integer overflow in the context of an allocation. And that should get your exploity sense of tingling because small values in the context of allocations are often used for under allocation. Under allocation is frequently the prelude to overcopy. So down in the SMB compression decompress, the attacker gets to control what kind of decompression it is. They get to control where the input buffer address is. Specifically, it's in this attacker controlled P nat raw buffer at some particular offset that they get to control. Then they get to use their acid math in a calculation of the size of data to be decompressed. And this is acid math and you know, there is the potential for something like a integer underflow at this point, but that is not actually going to be to the attacker's advantage here because they do want to allow for decompression to occur. They wanna let this small amount of data coming in get expanded up to a big amount of data to buffer overflow. So they don't you know, use that acid math for integer underflow there. Then the output buffer is controlled by this new header, which was that under allocation. New header, P net raw buffer, and at some offset that the attack controls past the beginning of the allocation. That's where it's going to write data out to. So that's kind of dangerous right there. That's looking kind of indexed out of bound right kind of thing to me. And then they also control the output size of the buffer, which of course is useful just to you know make sure that this thing, if it has any sanity checks inside of it, doesn't, for instance, think that you know there's not enough space to decompress the data to. Well, ultimately that is going to be our overcopy because the cause and under allocation, and we said like, oh yeah, you can totally, you know, make write up to this amount of size into that under allocation, which is going to lead to an overcopy. And after that function returns, it's going to return the final decompressed size that was actually written. And this buffer is going to be all sorts of smashed by the decompression operation itself. And then there's a little bit of sanity checks on that, but you know we don't care so much about that because the attacker can control this value and they can make sure that the actual amount that was decompressed does equal that. So then once again, we see an attacker controlled value used for an if check. And of course the attacker can make sure that that is non-zero. And then what do we have on this line, but a mem move with an attacker controlled length, an attacker controlled input buffer and a under allocated buffer. So that is yet another overcopy. It is two overflows for the price of one. Oh, what a day, what a glorious day. Well, what was the fix? don't know because it's proprietary code and there was no patch analysis done by the researchers. I don't know, maybe at this point there's some other you know, write-up somewhere else, but at least the write-ups that I'm citing here and that I used for the original version of this video, there was no patch analysis done. So you can go ahead and check out those write-ups 